welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about regional qualifying for the Open Championship. So each year of the 156 places in, in the Open Championship, um, a handful are awarded to people that have got through the, the regional qualifying tournaments. There's in stage one 15 courses uh, with an 18 hole stroke play tournament. The top handful get through, it's somewhere between five and eight. Um, any ties are dealt with with playoffs on the day, um, which as you'll find out later, can be a little bit heartbreaking for some. Um, the people that get through from that stage go on to the final stage, which is at four courses around the country. This year, the final qualifying in the southeast is at Royal St. Ports and the first stage regional qualifying that we're going to look at today was at the Roch Rochester and Cobham Park Golf Club. I was very fortunate to get to spend uh, quite a lot of time with, with Group 4. Uh, Nick Panting on the tee now, he plays out of Rochester and Cobham, uh, plus two I believe, uh, great golfer. Um, also in that group was Harvey Sladden, he's a Littlestone member um, I've had the pleasure of being absolutely beaten up by him and his partner in foursomes. Uh, he goes to school in America. And uh, the, the final person in this group was, was Todd Adcock, who was once uh, eighth in the world amateur golf rankings four times Walker Cup. And he's won the, the English Amateur Championship. So, uh, yeah, good golfers all round. This uh, fourth hole is a, a tight, short par four. It's um, it's probably not long enough for driver. Uh, it is mega tight, and you can see the fairway there in the background. It it opens up the closer you get to the green, so it's not not even like taking an iron is uh, is a good play. Uh, birdie for Nick and Todd. Uh, unfortunately, an eight for. For Harvey, who who lost his tee shot, uh, ball spot, I heard it in the tree above them, but but couldn't couldn't find it. Uh, fifth hole, cracking golf hole. This uh, you can easily run out of room. Uh, nice vista down the hill. Decent tee shots from. Uh, from Nick and Harvey I think Todd uh, Todd had a bit of trouble still managed a par Harvey managed a par and uh, Nick unfortunately dropped a shot there gave back the the bird that he made at the previous one there's a lot of irons off of tees um Obviously, Nick, being a, a Rochester member, has uh, had a really good idea of of what's what. Harvey there hitting a fantastic putt and being <laughs> being disappointed about it. There's a couple of instances of that. Uh, me and his dad, who was caddying for him, had a had a good laugh. You can get an idea of the uh, the thickness of this rough. It, it's kind of it's pretty dense, pretty deep, um, and the ball kind of sits on top of it, so it's super easy to go underneath. Um, and with fast greens, it's uh, yeah. If you're short sided, you were you were struggling. This is the ninth hole, um, over the road, down a. Down a shoot, saw a, a couple of guys hit it left into the into the trees throughout the day. Um, no, no such problems for for this group though. The greens uh, you don't really see it on video very often, but for some reason my camera's managed to pick it out. A um, lot of undulations, a lot of ridges. The pins, they you never really looked at them and thought to yourself, right. This is um, 
this is a, a tricky one but you see some were right on the edge of ridges and um, easy to get caught out a few trees on the course as you can see Harvey uh, falling foul of the trees there decent uh, it did well to get out and give himself a, a chance at recovery now this is um, this is Nick Nick Putin, uh, a big putt, and uh, he putted well all day, as as did the other two. Um, Todd had some some massive putts, um, but this one, you know, it just didn't look like it was even going to get there when he hit it, and uh, it was in all the way. Sadly. Just coming up a little bit short, short and right there for for Todd. And just a bit of a knee knocker for Harvey. No problem. Now this was. Uh, this was Nick's approach shot. It looked so good on 18. Like I say, just on the side, on the edge of the ridge, um, and that's gone, gone miles, miles away from the hole when it was, uh, you know, had every chance of going in. I was, uh, I was super impressed with the golf course. The, they have a, an open every year that um, I had on my list of things that I'd like to to enter if my handicap gets low enough um, certainly will be trying to get into it next year um, greens were fast the rough the rough was uh, was rough but it seemed I don't know n not quite as uh, as dense as as you get at some places Littlestone in particular is exceptionally dense at the moment I've played some other courses where you know if your ball's gone in there You've you've got basically a fifty fifty chance of finding it. Um, there seem to be a lot of balls found. Uh, obviously, ball spotters make that hugely uh, hugely easier than just uh, you and your mate in a in a two ball. So, all handshakes on the eighteenth. Then, um, Nick shot even par uh, seventy one, and those those guys teed off at quarter past seven in the morning. And I think at about half past seven in the evening, Nick found out that he was in a playoff for the last spot and uh, and sadly lost. So he's f fourth reserve, I think. Um, fingers crossed for him. Um, would would be great to to see him get through to the the next stage and and hopefully all all the way to the Open after watching him play. Uh, thoroughly deserved. So. The group we're following now, um, Dan Brown from Scene Valley, which is uh, right near my house. Dan's uh, also a member at Littlestone, professional. Uh, really, really tidy, tidy player. He opted for a, for an iron off of this tee, hit it straight down the middle. Uh, this is the fourth hole again. Um, the other two guys just we're in a bit of a world of world of pain and you can see like they don't look like terrible shots um but yeah clearly the greens had a bit of bit of pace to them bit of fire to them um and there's a lot of either misreads or just just cozying it up so dan's putt was uh downhill fast um did well to only leave himself a couple of foot for the comebacker. This is the ninth again with the the road in. Uh, the place was absolutely packed. Even when I arrived early in the morning, you know I was par parked a long way from the from the uh, car park on a, on a verge. The marshals, all the the volunteers, people from Rochester and Cobham, did a fantastic job. Everyone was super friendly. Um, all seem to be enjoying 
enjoying themselves and uh, and the prestige of of having the the tournament there. Um, these guys, I said before about the ninth hole and hitting it into the trees. Well, uh, Jeremy Chevalier from from France did just that. Um, ended up racking up a nine on this hole. Um, again, example of short sightedness. That's you know a pretty good shot. Um, Jeremy short sighted. Not a lot he could have done there. You'll you'll see from the putts coming back just how how severe that slope is. Um, very slopey green. And I find um, that fast greens are, are almost harder when you're you're hitting uphill because the differential um, between up and down is, uh, is is quite a lot. I saw a thing Brad Faxon said uh, on YouTube recently that on an 11 stimp green with a 2% slope, so it's 11, 11 feet on the flat, um, uphill would be 8 feet, downhill would be 19 feet, I think, or 18 feet. So, you know, significant difference and, uh, yeah, a little bit less, less so when you've got... Um, got slower greens I guess 17th cracking golf hole um, strategy Harvey hit a 4 iron I believe or a 3 iron seemed like he was a long way back but these guys have hit driver and this is what they're faced with it's uh, waist high probably thicker denser than than most other places on the course findable but super grabby, um, can't see your feet, uh, and they've they've done well to to get out. Unfortunately, I don't know the names of these guys. The R and A make it super easy for journalists, and uh, and every group has their number stuck onto their bag. Um, I just didn't didn't notice what the numbers were for these guys, and it wasn't in any of the footage. So sorry, we'll try harder next time. Some decent recoveries to get out of those, uh, out of those really tricky lies. Um, but you can see, you know, that looked like a fantastic shot until it didn't. Um, left himself a lot of work to do from over there. Again, uphill putts, struggling to get them to the hole, but the, the downhillers are slippery. And then just a little tidy up. Managed to get a couple of shot traces in on the 18th. Um, great finishing hole. I mean, you saw you saw the green from the the previous footage. Um, lots of rough down the right. Dog legs round. Um, doesn't seem to be like if you're hitting it straight, you're not going to run out of room. Um, nice draw from the first chap nice high shot there from the second guy flirting up with the with the bunkers it looked like shot tracer also looked like that but I think in reality when we get up there it's uh, it's good this guy un unfortunately did not um, follow his playing partners and and he had a a four right. Luckily, as I said, uh, ball spotters out on the course everywhere. This lady did a great job for finding it, and he did a great job extracting it. This shot looked like shot of the day. Um, I wish I'd kept the, the camera rolling because uh, he looked back at me <laughs> with like a little wry, wry smile. It looked like it had gone in. Um, However, when we get up there, you remember the ridge, um, and he'd actually gone, gone quite a way past. 
the wind was was kind of swirling a little bit. It definitely picked up in the afternoon for these guys. Um, and pace of play um, slowed down quite a bit. There's there's not really much you can do about it, but the fourth hole is a call-up hole. Um, very, very difficult for the the organisers. You know, it's, it's an unusual thing that you're playing into a short par four. You, you're almost driving the green, and then you get on the green, you've got to mark it um, and let the, the group behind play up. Um, but at times I saw several groups on the green uh, waiting for their uh, on the tee, sorry, waiting for their turn, and uh, yeah, the the guys in the morning definitely got the the better of the weather and um, and the better of the pace, uh, I think. So here's a shot at the end of the day. All the practice practices have gone. The range is empty. The putting green is empty. Um, Big thanks to the RNA for putting this on Rochester and Cobham Park Golf Club. Um, it was a, a fantastic day. Really enjoyed walking around, um, chatting to people, filming, and can't wait to do the next stage at, um, at Royal Sink Ports. If you've liked the video, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.